Well, what's up, everybody? We are live at five. It's Tuesday, I don't know, May 12th. I'm Paul Wanturk. I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And a fantastic lady as our guest today. I am so happy to see her. Beth, who's joining us on Live at Five today? Uh, we're very lucky because the always delightful Beanie Feldstein is with us today. Yes. yes. So she is, I mean, so much. So many amazing things are happening for her. I love it. I love it so much. She has a new movie out and a lot of movies to come that I'm really excited about. We have to talk about. And she was in the Sondheim. She was just in the Mother's Day. Anyway. She has that somebody, number. Yeah, she's she, 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 number. <laughs> she saved she saved Mother's Day. Thank, Thank God. Thank you, Beanie. <laughs> we'll get to Beanie, but first today's news. We aren't gonna have to wait for it much longer. Oh, good one, Caitlin. Okay. We started the day with some really good news. Are you satisfied, Beth? I am <laughs> sorry, satisfied, sorry. or I will be. So <laughs> We knew that the Hamilton movie was coming. It was originally scheduled to come out October 15th, 2021. So it was quite a far ways away. And then this morning, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Hamilton creator, of course, announced that the Hamilton movie, now this is the original cast filmed on stage. This is not some recreation. Will come out on Disney Plus on July 3rd. Yeah. Disney Plus is the only streaming platform I haven't signed up for yet, but clearly that's that's old news because I haven't. And I signed have up. signed up for it because I have children. Oh, so yeah. original cast: Tony Winners, Leslie Odom Jr., and Renee Elise Goldsberry, David Diggs, all the people, all the people we love from the original cast doing their thing. And this was filmed way back when it was actually at, all those people are still on yep. Broadway, and uh, it's just really good news. Right in time for Independence Day. We just celebrate. We thought we were going to get in the Heights this summer, but we're getting Hamilton instead. Yeah, so they're swapping. They're swapping. We get right. in the Heights next year. Yeah. There's always going to be a big Lynn thing happening. That's correct. <laughs> and then we got some not unexpected, but sad news. Yeah, you know, I mean, these days we sort of take everything, you know, it is what it is. But Broadway, of course, was supposed to come back, what, June 8th? Seven. What was the... June, June 7th. 7th, right. Okay, so now it's on hold till September 6th. That's the, the new official date. Summer is off for Broadway, uh, due of course to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, refunds and exchanges are available for all performances through September 6th. And of course, we've been reporting all sorts of news about some shows um, have been canceled. Some shows are coming later next season. Um, all that news is is still ongoing and you know we just wish everyone well and we want we want to wait until everything is in the right place to bring broadway back and man when it's back it's going to be a party i'll tell you that much so. just to be clear they haven't set a return date they are just now offering these refunds exchanges through september okay. and then they will tell us when we're officially okay. back that date has not yet been set Okay, so don't put on your Sunday clothes for, for September yet. I don't nice, know. Nice, nice. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Sounds good. Um, but we fans will still get to see SJP and MB on stage. It's like you're speaking in code, Caitlin. We are talking about Matthew Broderick and Sarah Jessica Parker. And this is another uh, performance that was scheduled to be on this season. It should have been open by yeah. now. Yeah. And uh, they are starring in Neil Simon's Plaza Suite, very funny comedy from the late 60s, from 1968, directed by their friend, Tony-winning actor, John Benjamin Hickey, who has been here with us on Live at Five at home. And uh, now they are just shifting that till next spring. So it's still at the yeah. Hudson Theater. They will preview on March 19th, and they will have their run through July 18th. They haven't set an opening night yet, but you know, things are shifting, but we're still gonna get to see them. So that's good news. I feel so lucky, Beth, because I saw it. Remember, I saw it in Boston. Yeah, everybody. I saw it like two or three performances before it ended in Boston. So, I mean, I that's like a major sneak peek. Sorry for boasting. I'm just saying. Yeah, that. really. Just Yes, and we are going to let them be our star once again, and everything is right. Everything is right. 
so that is, of course, a lyric um, from Smash. You all know Smash, of course, and a lot of you have sort of been digging into it again, I think, during your at-home time. So they did this. Uh, of course, Smash was about the two musicals, the hit list versus Bombshell, which one was going to be the hit, what was going to win the Tonys. It was all that drama. Uh, and it was like Hollywood. It's like, you know, the Hollywood show is all about like, what's going to happen at the Oscars? That was all about what's going to happen at the Tonys. Um, and, and of course, Bombshell's a Marilyn Monroe musical. And then they did this concert. The Actors Fund did an amazing concert that I was lucky enough to have seen um, at the Minskoff. And that was in 2015. That was almost five years ago now. God, time flies back. It was right after the Tony Awards, right? It was like the day after. So everyone was a little tired. Right. That's and right. We all went. That's right. Normally everyone's exhausted, but we got up. Yeah, that's right. We did it. And everyone was there. Catherine McVie, Megan Hilty, of course, um, you know, Christian Borle, all the all the stars from from the TV show. And so now we'll be we'll get to stream it. Uh, People, People Magazine is uh, streaming it on May twentieth at eight o'clock p.m. And of course, it is a benefit again for the Actors Fund. And there will be a reunion. Um, it'll be introduced by Renee Zellweger. Um, and uh, Julie Klausner from Difficult People is hosting the live reunion during, I think, during the intermission. It's going to be a lot of fun, and, and just trust me, you're going to want to see this. And there's still, you know, talk that this might become a, a Broadway musical. I mean, right? right. That's still, you know, Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman worked on these songs, and they're fantastic. Anyway, we'll see, but for now, you can you can join in on the fun. Yes, and the cult hit center stage is coming to the small screen. You know what's hard to believe, Paul? Center stage, that movie, is 20 years old, and so is Broadway.com. <laughs> so oh, Center wow. Stage came out in 2000. Yeah. It was directed by Nicholas Heitner, and it was choreographed by Susan Stroman, right. the producers. So right. this film is about sort of the cutthroat world of ballet, and now that film is going to be the basis for a TV series brought to you by Sony TV. So... It's, it's going to be uh, created by Jennifer Caton Robinson, who is the Sweet and Vicious creator. And it's going to follow the same sort of thing. Center Stage had sequels. It was really popular, right? It's so all directed by Nicholas Heiner's Turn It Up in 2008 and On Point in 2016. So we don't have a timeline for this or casting, but it's good to know that Center Stage will be on the small screen sometime soon. There's a lot of theater fans. There's a lot of crossover. And there's a, that was a picture of Donna Murphy. There were a lot of theater people in it. Yeah, yeah, Donna Murphy was kind of amazing in it. It was kind of iconic. Amazing in everything. Ask me. Uh, okay, Beth, good point. Uh, thank you so much, Beth. Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, guys, we got Beanie Feldstein here with us today for another fun episode of Live at Five Home Edition, live on both Facebook and YouTube. You guys know who she is. She is such a star, both the stage and screen, most recently seen on Broadway in Hello, Dolly! Revival, which is why she has Bette Midler's number, apparently. Um, her newest film, How to Build a Girl, literally just came out on demand. Um, her other screen credits include the hugely popular Lady Bird and Book Smart. She's going to be in the movie adaptation of The Humans and Merrily We Roll Along for 20 years. She is just everything. We're so happy to have her here to talk about it. You guys can leave all of your questions in the comments below. Follow her on social at Beanie Feldstein. And everyone, please welcome Beanie and Paul. Beanie Hi. Feldstein. Hello. There she is. There she is. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm you so happy to see you. You know, this is my first live at five ever. Not even oh just. God. I, I know. Well, well, we would have you once a month, if not once a week. So you can come in whenever you want. Anytime I, at five o'clock, just text us and we'll give you the link. It. I'm here. I'm live. Um, <laughs> I was thinking about how much Broadway.com I have ingested in this house over my lifetime because I'm in my <laughs> house. And I. I used to do homework in my brother's room and I, I kind of set up my desk there because I'm younger than him. So he was out of the house and I would just, when I would procrastinate, I would just sneak on over to Broadway.com. I love it. I love it. Video. So I was, I was just kind of getting nostalgic as I was thinking about getting to be here with you. Just how, how, how big of a fan I've been of the site forever. And it was just sweet because I'm in my parents' house. I was thinking about how much, how long I've loved it. I love that, and I'll I will then say that I met you at the Dear Evan Hansen opening night party, 
and you came up to me and said all of that, which I loved. <laughs> I loved. I loved it so well, much. I'm really I, feeling all of those feelings today because I'm. And cause now I'm, you are you are so legit now, Beanie Feldstein. I mean, look at you. So much has happened. It's look, so you great. I made a bold fashion choice. Just look at me. <laughs> Let. First of all, I didn't get to properly congratulate you on your Golden Globe nomination for Booksmart. So congratulations belatedly. I mean, that it's so exciting and so many movies are happening for you. And like Caitlin said, How to Build a Girl just came out. It just came Rave out. Rave reviews. Like people are people are loving it. You're mm. you're a Brit you're a British girl in this one. <laughs> correct? What was that accent? <laughs> that was um, my accent. I was actually thinking about it because I was thinking about, we just mentioned Renee Zellweger and, you know, she had that, you know, when she became Bridget Jones, she okay. became very... So our producers produced the whole Bridget Jones franchise. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that. I was joking with them, with Deborah, one of our producers who who had done Bridget Jones the whole way. I was like, you are the only person that lets Americans be Brits because Brits can be Americans all the time. But <laughs> right. I think Renee and I are some of the only examples that I can think of where it's the other way around. Um, so I'm always like, Deb, you really paved the way for letting us American girls come, come try it out in England. But um, yeah, it, it was... Playing Johanna Morgan in How to Build a Girl, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's about a 16-year-old girl who's living in Wolverhampton, England, which is a small town, about two, two and That's a half That's her. Hours. That's two. her. Oh, yeah. There, there she is. There she is. <laughs> so she's sitting in her small town, and uh, it's kind of, she lives on a council estate with her family, so they have uh, money from the government to give them housing, and she... they. She doesn't have much, but she has a huge imagination and a huge love of the world and love of people and a love and a passion for writing. And at the beginning of the film, she very embarrassingly plunges her family even deeper into poverty through an incredible cameo with Chris O'Dowd, which is just an incredible kind of, uh -huh. we're so lucky to have so many people come and be in How to Build a Girl. And Chris O'Dowd plays a television presenter for um, a local news show and, and my character comes on and embarrasses him herself in a very intense way and she needs a job she needs money for her family and she becomes against all odds a music critic at this big sexy fun music magazine in london with all these boys and it, it's the story of a girl trying to find herself through this career of being a rock critic and it's a it's a true coming of age story and a really beautiful kind of portrait of a girl trying to find herself and all the while in, in a British accent. And not just a British accent, but a very specific regional British accent because I, I'm not sure about you guys, but or you, Paul, but I didn't know much of British accents. Like, <laughs> I think of London, and then I knew that within London there would be like a posh accent and a cockney sure. accent. Sure. And maybe like in the North, I knew they spoke differently. But I didn't understand just, just how distinct the regional specificity of accents are there and also the link that they have to identity um accent is so linked to identity in general of course but in the u.s we just have way fewer especially considering how big our country is compared to the uk which is like the size of georgia and they have hundreds of accents within that very small region and so i really wanted to get wolverhampton right because it's not a city that is often portrayed in the media and i it, there were really no other reference points for it. Um, so I had to go to Wolverhampton and learn the accent because there, that was kind of the only option for how to do it. And I ended up working in a store wow. in London for three weeks. And um, yeah, the producers found this incredible little like feminist utopia of a store called the Shop in the Square. If you're ever in Wolverhampton, when the world is healed, please go check it out. Um, I love those women. I'm still on their Facebook group of their like employee Facebook. Group. I love that. Um, I, I just love them. And they were so kind to me and they opened their shop and they opened their arms to just inviting this like random girl from LA in and, and letting, you know, her learn the accent in their presence. And they were really sweet at the beginning. And, and then at a certain point, one of them was like, can I be hard on you? And I was like, please, I beg you. Like, I don't want to, sound, I want to do you right. Like, please. And she was like, okay, you have to back up and try that over. And that word was wrong. And that word was wrong. And that word was wrong. And she, they really, really helped wow. me. So it was a very immersive experience, unlike anything I've ever kind of, or maybe will ever go through again. Um, but it was, it was incredible.
I love it. And so your character, um, she, what's her name when she becomes a, a music? So her name is Johanna Morgan, and then she adopts this pen name, kind of alter ego named Dolly Wilde. Dolly, hello Dolly, here she hello, is. Hello Dolly. There well, she, she is. is. I did Hello Dolly, and then I did Booksmart directed by <laughs> Olivia Wilde, and then I got to play Dolly Wilde, which I always thought was funny. Oh my God, I love it so much. So as we mentioned, you were here, you are, you were, um, you were part of the uh, Broadway Does Mother's Day, Benefit, you were fantastic. You opened the show with a with a Beth Midler phone Beth Midler phone call. Uh, that was fun. Oh it was my a really nice surprise. Nobody knew Beth was in the show, so that was like a big surprise moment. Right. A huge surprise moment. It was it was so fun. I so I, as I said, I'm in my parents' house, and I have tons of Hello Dolly uh, clothing <laughs> and, and so many kind of keepsakes, but they're all in my apartment in New York, and ah. so I had to scavenge my parents' house and. I thought it was really sweet that only Hello Dolly thing, Hello Dolly thing I had is a shirt that says my first musical on it, which I think is meant for- Oh yeah, there it is, my <laughs> first musical. <laughs> I, I think it meant for like children that came to the show. And I first, but because it was my first, it was my Broadway debut, I bought it for myself at the end of the run. And I thought it was very sweet that that was the only one I had. I had Actually, there. what is Bet wearing? Did they sell these like Hello Dolly cardigans? What is that? Like a custom? Okay, menu? let me tell you. If only you could see the whole view because that's a Hello Dolly onesie that we were given. Oh, that's holiday. what the staff. That's totally what the staff thought it was. Okay. Yeah, okay. So it is. I'm so sad because again, mine's in New York. I think Kate wore hers in in the song as well. Um, but it is a full body oh one. Moment. Amazing, yeah. amazing, so much. Uh, here you are in that show. That was Aww. that was that, that view over on the left. Uh, that was so <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I what what was it? What's it like looking back on that experience? And you know, I know you had Broadway dreams your whole life growing up. Uh, you and of course Ben Platt, your your BFF, mm -hmm. and you both made it, and you both gotten these huge hits. Um, what what's it like looking back on that experience? And are we going to get you back on Broadway? Of, of course. I mean, if Broadway will have me, I, I dream of being back there very soon, I hope. I, I, as you said, grew up musical theater obsessed and then found myself amongst the most amazing other people who were <laughs> musical theater obsessed in my high school. And I, it's still surreal to me, I think, looking back on it, just how it all worked out. I. I was doing Lady Bird and we were filming um, in Los Angeles and I was living with my parents and I got an email or a call or an email, I can't remember that the producers of Lady Bird were also producing Hello Dolly. And I already knew about the show because I'm a huge Bette Midler fan. So I had been following when it was announced and then when it was cast and they put out a whole, I'm sure it was on Broadway.com even, uh, a full announcement of the entire cast yeah. Every single person involved, crew, everything. And then at the bottom, it just said, like, Minnie Faye to be announced on a later date. They just, they hadn't found Minnie Faye. Right. And we had been filming the scenes in Lady Bird where my character sings. And they kind of made a connection and thought maybe Beanie should come in. And, and for those of you that know Hello, Dolly, um, typically, as it's done in most kind of revivals of shows or when they're done in local community theaters or at schools, like, you typically cast in the vein of that they had normally been cast before. And typically Minnie Faye is played by a smaller blonde girl. Sure. And um, they took a chance on me and they thought, why don't we bring Bean in and see what happens? And I auditioned in LA and on like a day off from Lady Bird, I went in, it was just me and a casting associate in LA and a pianist. And I came home up to upstairs to my bedroom and I got a call from my agent and I was like, ah, oh, the tape didn't work. And I, I answered and I was like, did the tape not work? Like, should I get back in the car? And he was like, no, oh, you got it. And I was like, what? And I, I feel like, I don't know if you know what verklempt means right now, but it means like emotional. <laughs> I fell off my bed and I ran through my house like a, like a chihuahua or monkey ears. I was like losing my mind. I was hysterical. My parents were hysterically crying. And then when I was eventually allowed to tell Ben, I have, I actually have the text over my phone. I found it recently. He sent me like the maps um, from the Dear Evan Hansen Theater to the Schubert. And it's like a 0.1 minute. I, anyone that knows how close they are, it's like yeah. a second walk. And he was like, I can't believe this is our life. And it, it, it still feels surreal. It feels completely surreal. Um, but 
the year I was on Broadway with Hello Dolly was truly the best year of my life. And that community of people, the entire community of people that made the show um, are my family forever. I would do anything for them, so. I have to tell you, um, you were in with Ben, Take Me to the World, the Sondheim 90th concert that uh, I worked on. And my yeah. favorite, my favorite part of the entire process of putting that show together was when I watched your footage and Ben's footage together. Really? And I realized how amazingly you played off each other with choreography. Like, it was like a gasp moment. It was like, oh my God, these two theater nerds from LA who grew up together just like took it to the next level. So if you don't mind, I would like to play a little clip. Would oh, you mind watching a little bit? So because nice. it, it was like one of my favorite things. So oh, we're gonna en no. enjoy this, everyone. We change, we're strangers. I'm meeting you in the woods. Who minds, who are dangers? I know we'll get past the woods. And once we're past, let's hope the changes last. Beyond what? Beyond witches and slippers and hoods. Just the two of us, beyond lies. Safe at home with our beautiful prize. Just a few of us. It takes trust. It takes just a bit more and we're done. We want four, we had none. We got three. We need one. It takes two. Are you kidding me with how adorable that that video? I swear, I will love that video for the rest of time. It is so talk about talk about the the making of it and the conversation you guys had ahead of time. You clearly planned the well, this way the, the, the adorable and the kiss and the it's so absolutely. Good. So, um, well, first of all, Ben and I did into the woods in high school together. Right, and right. Great. He was the baker. I was uh, no surprise, little red. Um, and. <laughs> Uh, so we had never, we, we've kind of grown up on Into the Woods together, and it's one of our mutually favorite Sondheim yeah. musicals and musicals in general, and I think it arguably is my number one favorite. Uh, and we just have loved it for so long, and we know, know it inside and out, but we've never sung that song together in person. So when we found out that we were like so beautifully included in, in what was one of the most incredible nights, I'd say certainly my favorite night of this situation and such a beautiful gift, um, to the world and to a step and everything. Uh, I was so excited and I called Ben and he told me that he was going to record his, I think like Wednesday night and uh -huh. it was due Thursday morning or something like that. So he was like, I'll get mine to you by this time. And then you can work off of mine. And I called him and I was like, do you want to just try to sing it or kind of do something over FaceTime just to get a sense of, of how we were doing. But then we started doing it and you can't do it over FaceTime because the, the lag is so difficult. Right, right. There's right. no way to do it. So I I said to him, I was like, in my mind's eye, if I could project your performance of this song, I see you going like this. Cause that's like a very bad thing. <laughs> and he was like, oh my God, that's perfect. Let's do it on strangers. And I was like, okay, perfect. Cause I just like kind of envisioned that in my head of what he would do. And then he was like, and we have to kiss at the end. And I was like, of course we have to kiss the end. So like, <laughs> the little turn was me, the little kiss was Ben. Um, but it did really, it's, I mean, it did really show me that we are connected on some spiritual plane. Like we've never sung that song together in person. And yet it does feel like we're in person somehow through the computer. And that was so beautiful for me to watch. And also just to watch that whole evening with like yeah. my heroes, I was, so honored to be included and it was such a beautiful uh fundraising gift uh, i love into the woods as well but i'm obsessed with merrily we roll along so i'm not letting you off this video <laughs> chat without hearing a little bit about this movie that i i can't wait to go to the premiere in 2043 <laughs> or whatever year it'll probably be like the last year of my of my career i'll no. retire once the Marilyn movie comes out, that'll be like, that's oh, the goal. That's so the goal. Young. That's ridiculous. I just saw online photos of Vera Wang. Do you know who Vera Wang is the designer? She's yeah, yeah. 70 years old. You have to look up how amazing she looks. She modeled her own designs. Anyway, don't say that. You'll be glowing in 20 years when we go to the premiere. Um, well, I'll be, I, I, that, but, but I need to see this movie get made. And anyone who doesn't know, of course, Marilyn takes place 
over 20 plus years and it's told in reverse. And so do, have you actually, and Richard Linklater is making this, who did Boyhood, the movie that took, so it's, it's kind of a brilliant idea that he's doing it and you're doing it with Ben. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're Mary, and obsessed with Mary. And now you know is like one of my favorite. I, I could talk about Mar about Marilee forever. Beth knows I'm obsessed. I was with so Marilee. excited because for the song time thing, I of course we didn't have any other knowledge of what other people were singing or what was yeah. the order of the show or any of the other content of the show. And when it started off with the overture, I was like, oh, yes. oh it's the best um, overture ever. So uh, have you actually have you filmed the our our time? Have you filmed the final? Yeah. I can't, can't say. say. Can't say. Okay. I okay. Can't say anything too specific, but what I can say is that um, again, I think Ben and I have this like it's beyond friendship. Honestly, it's like a soulmate connection. Yeah. Um, we are like twins separated at birth or something, and we've always loved Marilee. I think specifically even after high school, like in our college age years, yeah, um, we both kind of fell in love with it, and then actually, which is crazy. When I knew, um, of, when I got the role in Lady Bird, I wanted, I had never gotten to see Marilee and I wanted to see it um, because it's referenced and we do part of it yeah. in, in the movie. And Ben and I were um, across the street from Lincoln Center having lunch. And I was like, I really want to watch it. And he was like, well, why don't we try to go to the archive? And I was like, right, can you just walk into the archive? Like I had never done it before, the Lincoln Center archive, for those of you who don't know. Um, the New York Library Performing Arts Archive, I think is its official yeah. title. Um, they have recording of every musical done since, you would know, Paul, like end of, like early 70s? Uh, they, they, uh, mid, mid 70s, I think is that strong, but a lot of, yeah, most shows, yeah. Yeah, most, not everything, but most shows. And yeah. um, if you have like a, a artistic or academic purpose for watching it, they let you in. And so- Like starring you, in a movie version, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I didn't write that. Oh, like, I'm just saying. Yeah. I just said, I, I need it for a reference for something. And um, Ben and I watched it together that day and we sort of fell even more in love with it. Amazing. Because we'd never seen it. And then we we saw it, the most recent um, roundabout production of it, yeah. we saw it together. So it's just been a part of our lives for so long. And of course, for me, like being, my character in Lady Bird playing Mary and Marilee. It's all very- I um, know, it's crazy. <laughs> we are so excited. And and all that to say that Rick is an extraordinary director. He had a, a retrospective of his work at the Pompidou in Paris. And I was there um, with my family over the holidays and I got to go and kind of stepping inside the world of his work visually represented in like an exhibition was really powerful and I just love them so much and we're so excited. I can't say more than that. That's but all right. It's worth the wait. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to be sobbing in a movie theater because that <laughs> man, that 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 story kills me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna bring Caitlin back in and we're gonna take a few yeah. fan questions. Yes. Okay, so first question is Jason wants to know how did you find your brilliant in all caps laugh for Hello Dolly? <laughs> oh, oh, I love that question. I've never been asked that question. Before. Um, that is Jerry Zax. That is the genius beyond genius of Jerry Zax, who is our brilliant director of Hello Dolly. He, it was his idea, and him and I sort of workshopped the monologue alone together um, a lot at the beginning of the rehearsal process. And that is all Jerry. I am. Uh, I've learned so much from him, working with him, and learning from him, and. And that moment, I think, creating it together with him in the rehearsal room, but it was totally his idea. Um, was really very like special memory of the show. I love it. That is so fun. Okay, so a lot. Uh, you probably get this question a lot, but everybody wants to know, including Stephanie M on YouTube, <laughs> if you and Ben could star in a musical together, what would you want to do? Ah, oh, Stephanie, a classic. Um, well, I mean, I think at some point we would have set into the woods and merrily. Uh, uh, there's so many, there's so, so many. I wanna see Ben play George um, in Sunday. I don't know. I think also be really a full production of The Baker and the Baker's Wife, honestly, my, after that experience, I was like, maybe we need, I mean, maybe we need a few more years, but I would love <laughs> that. I also, a parade, I would, I would love to do that oh. with Ben. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm into that. I wouldn't do it, so, you know. 
Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I love it. All right. And I think we're going to end on this last question. Okay. Yes. So Savannah Grace on YouTube wants to know what is one role you would love to play regardless of age, race, gender, vocal type, et cetera. <laughs> oh, Savannah. Free for all, whatever you want. Wow. Oh, that's, I feel like I, it's so rare to get to think in that way. Um, maybe Max Bialystok. That would be a fun one. Ooh, I'm into that. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I also <laughs> always, oh my God, Tevia. I've always wanted to play Tevia. Oh. I think it's an amazing Tevia. And wow. I really envision a world one day where I get to play Tevia. So I think maybe one of those two. Mm. But more of like a more attainable one would be Winifred of One's Quantum Mattress. You know, I didn't even ask you, like, what's the, what's the quarantine time been like? I mean, you've obviously been doing a lot, and you're promoting a movie and a lot of things going on, but how, and you're with your family, and how, how are you doing? Here. Um, It's good. My my sweet bulldog is back there stretching <laughs> Jackie. Oh, so <laughs> cute. Oh, my God. We got a little walk by, a, a, a strut by. Um, I know she's like I'm not, I'm not dressed for camera being. Um, but just like love, just spending every second with her. I'm obsessed with her. And um, sorry, the shirt's even loud. That's not helpful. <laughs> but uh, watching a lot of amazing film and, and TV, I do. I mean, obviously, we're so sad that How to Build a Girl can't be in theaters that people can go to. And yeah. um, I think you know we're all sad that we can't have those communal experiences that art can give us but i am really proud that how to build a girl is on demand now for anyone to buy it and watch safely inside because it's a really hopeful movie it's a really loving warm movie um with also a lot of sass and and you know it's sexy yeah. and it's sultry and it's loud and it's all these things but it's also really just genuinely imaginative and warm and I think we can all use a little dose of that. I've been so thankful to sit down at the end of the day and watch something really exhilarating that takes me to yeah. another kind of zone. Um, so I'm, I'm proud that How to Build a Girl can add to that landscape of amazing content that's been out there. Little Fires Everywhere, if you watch. It's yeah, yeah. so good. Uh, <laughs> there's, I've been watching so many things. Um, yeah. But yeah, just spending time with my, my parents and I have taken up free Texas Hold'em. That's been my new kind of, oh. <laughs> I was a part wow. of a charity um, poker tournament this weekend. And in order to get gear up, I downloaded a free app on my phone and now I'm like, I'm a, oh, wow, I'm really <laughs> impressed. Wow. I have a new hobby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we didn't even talk about, you're also in the humans movie based on the, the Tony winning play. I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of beanie plus Broadway, even if we're not Always. quite Beanie on Broadway yet, yeah, but we'll, We'll get to Beanie on Broadway. We're, we're excited to uh, see you, bring everyone back in. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Beanie. My mom's notes. It's all covered up in case there's something special. That's hilarious. <laughs> thank you again. My handwriting, but it's my mom's handwriting. Um, thank you guys for having me be on Broadway.com in my house is a surreal kind of world. <laughs> Um, and I hope you all are very, very safe and healthy and social distancing and all those very important things right now. Oh, awesome. You. Can't wait to see you in person soon. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Okay. Welcome. Thanks again, Beanie. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today for another fun episode of Live at Five Home Edition. You guys can follow us where we get your podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in next time we talk to Erica Henningsen all about her fundraiser with Cheese the First.